Well, hello there, friends. Without a doubt, my favorite soup, a minestrone. Oh, I'm going to show you how to make the classic way. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, friends, and ring that bell. Stay tuned. We're making minestrone together right now. Well, hello there, friends. I'm making you my mom and my grandmother's favorite soup, minestrone. You know, everybody makes it different, eh? Depends the Italian family you grew up with. They did it one way, they did it the other. My grandmother did it with pasta, but my mother only put the beans in it. So today I'm making my grandmother and my mother. We'll put the bean and the pasta. All right, so first you got onion. And, uh, and remember, friends, Onion always number first. Don't forget now, right? Always, always number one. So now, those vegetables today, they gotta be cut small, very small, okay? And for those of you that have not seen the video where we cut the vegetables, Jack is gonna put a link over there to show you how to cut everything efficiently, yeah? So, small, and I mean small, okay? Look at this, because otherwise that soup is gonna take forever to cook, friends. We got celery, we got carrots, we got potatoes, small dice. We got cannelloni beans. We have green beans. We have escarole lettuce, escarole, uh, parsley, basil, herb de Provence, a mix of dry herb, oregano, basil, uh, and, and thyme, and sugar, this blend of herb de Provence. Um, garlic, a little more parsley, and some uh, uh, fresh thyme and oregano mixed together, okay? And very simple, friends. So, we're gonna put the, those vegetables in first, because those are gonna take the longest to cook, right? The longest to cook. Oh, for stock, friends, I'm using the vegetable stock that we made on the channel not too long ago. So, this is the perfect uh, uh, vegetarian, vegan recipe for you, friends. And you can make extra in a freezer. 17 years, no problem. I'm telling you, soup freeze a long, long time, friends. And they really do, so. Make an extra, don't make a little bowl of soup, we make it a big bowl, right? It's almost the same amount of work, you just gotta cut a little more vegetables. I gotta cut them small, friend. If I don't cut them small, they're not gonna cook. So those three right there, those three right there are gonna take the longest to cook, friends. You see right there? The potatoes, the celery, the carrots, are gonna take the longest to cook. So we're gonna get those going for a while, and then we'll come back after a little while, and we're gonna continue putting the rest. The is gonna go last. The, um, uh, the, the green beans and the beans are gonna go be before, and uh, we're gonna, so let's put the, the fresh thyme in there. Let's put a little garlic in there. You don't wanna put a lot of garlic, just a little bit. It looks like a lot, but it's not. All right, so, and, uh, well, I must have some big flame over there because I just singed my arm. So, <laughs> we're going to saute this for a second, and uh, we don't have much of a smell yet, but the garlic, the minute it heats the, the, the temperature of the garlic, then it starts to release its fragrance, and I like to do this. So, we're going to put some uh, vegetable stock to cover everything. And, uh, and how much you put in, friends, it's really up to you. What I like to do is I like to cover all my vegetables, you see? So, I'll show you in a minute. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now, remember, your soup is going to be only as good as your, uh, uh, as your stock. Eh? Now, some people put water. You can put water if you want. But uh, it is going to taste better if you have a, uh, because water don't taste like nothing. I mean, a lot of people make soup with water and, you know, and they add some cubes in there and stuff. I like better to use a stock. Now, for those of you that are not vegetarian, by all means, use a chicken stock. You're nothing wrong with it, okay? I make it with a vegetable stock because I love it. And, um, and that's it right now. So, friends, we're going to give this a good half hour. We'll let it cook. Let's get started. We'll get softened. Because the green beans are not going to take that long. 
then the uh, then the, uh, the the bean the um, Kalileni bean. You know, years ago, I would never have thought in a million years of using a canned bean because they were mushy. They were, and then Goya uh, somehow got a a way to do it where they do it nicely. They're nice and firm, huh? and we can put them at the end. But if you want to do dry beans, you just got to rehydrate them the night before and cook them in water. Uh, I find that then this is a nice solution, and then I got enough work to do with the soup. All of cutting all the vegetables, I don't need to do more work. But it's up to you, my friends. All right, so we'll be back in a few minutes when those vegetables are starting to soften. Okay, be back in a few minutes. Okay, friends, well, it's been about 30 minutes, and the vegetables are not cooked yet, but they're starting to be um, a little more tender, so I know they got a good head start. We're going to put our green beans in there because those guys are going to take a little while, but if you put them at the beginning, for sure they're going to be mush, and we don't want any mush. Uh, we're going to put our salt and pepper because we haven't done that yet. Of course, we can always adjust that toward the end. A little bit of, ooh, a little bit of that, a little bit of that, right? And um, and then we're going to put a bit of our chopped parsley. The chopped parsley can go in now. It's got a flavor. It's going to give us a, a knife of a flavor. And um, and we're going to let this cook, friends, and then we'll come back about 15 minutes prior, 15, 20 minutes before it's finished, to put the pasta, the cavatelli. We're gonna put it, put it right in there. You can put any small little pasta, orzo, whatever it is you wanna put in there and uh, it's fine. Certainly you don't have to put the pasta in there, but I wanted to make both my grandmother and my mother proud. So I'm using both. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay friends, the other 15 minutes has passed. I'm not gonna put the pasta. And like I said, you can skip this or put any kind of pasta you want, okay? And uh, it'll be perfectly fine. And, uh, you know, instead of cooking them in water, and uh, I'm going to cook them right there in the soup. It'll be much easier to do and, uh, and uh, just as good. Instead of cooking in um, just water, they're cooking in beautiful vegetable broth. All right? So now we're going to put the basil, and the basil, we're just going to chop it off. I, you know, you don't need to put it at the beginning because what's the sense of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of putting it? At, if you cook it too long, you're not going to smell it. And this smells amazing, you know? It reminds me when my mom would make it, she made it actually a French version uh, more because obviously we lived in France, um, uh, Super de Pistou, where she would actually put the, uh, the basil, you could smell it like a, a block before you got into the house because it smelled so good. And uh, she would make the soup in the summer because that's when the basil was the most fragrant. So in mineral dry, it was hot as could be in the south of France, it, we, had ate, we ate the soup. Big super de pussy, but it was so good. She gave you a huge plate. You sat down, and by the time you were finished with the bowl, you were like, oh my goodness. It's a filling soup, let me tell you. So we're going to uh, wait for those to start cooking, and then we're going to put the escarole on top, and then we're going to put the beans uh, for the next uh, 15, 20 minutes of cooking. And that'll be it. We'll be down in a minute. Okay, friends. The pasta is starting to cook. Everything is good. Now we're going to put our beans. And I use the whole water, by the way. I use the can, the 28 ounce can. I use the whole water in there because I like it. I think it gives you a nice little texture in there. And then we're gonna put the lettuce in there. And uh, and uh, you can just do this and just let it cook another 15, 20 minutes. And everything should be perfect, right? Consistency. Um, I added a little more stock. Now it's supposed to be a very full plate of vegetables with some uh, some broth in there. So how much, how much you put in, it's really up to you, broth-wise. You can add more, you can, it's, it's really up to you, my friend. And uh, and uh, if you can't find the escarole lettuce, it's not exactly easy to find, add spinach in there, or just skip it, you know. They don't have to add it, it's just, it's traditional to add it. So, friends, I'll be back when it's finished. Okay, friends. It's done. Time to eat. <laughs> so look, I got myself a huge bowl. I'm, I'm look at this. I mean, huge bowl. I mean, if you're gonna do this, you gotta do big, okay? You know, don't be playing around here. This is like a, this is a meal. This is a meal, a meal, a meal. Uh, how liquid do you want? If you want it to be a little thicker, then you can add more beans or you can add a touch of cornstarch. But, you know, to me, this is beautiful, okay? I want to show you the way my mom used to serve it. 
At first, she didn't do this. She didn't mess up the plate like I just did because I don't like it when I do this, you know? I like it when it's nice and, and nice and neat. Hey, mama mia. Here we go. All right, so what, what, I, what, what she would do, she would take a pesto and put a little bit of olive oil in it to make a little liquid. So a, a liquid pesto, if you will, and it would just happen to have a pesto olive oil. <laughs> That's amazing. You can rub that on your body. <laughs> you got a little tomato mozzarella with it, and oh man! <laughs> All right, look, she take a little bit of uh, of the uh, of the pesto oil and just give it a nice little flavor. You see, no 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 big deal. Boom boom boom, just like this. A little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano <laughs> or or pecorino romano, whatever makes you happy. And this, my friends, you have yourself a beautiful minestrone. Then I'm going to test right now. It's probably a hot. It's probably a little bit hot, but I tell you what, I'm, I'm still going to do it because it smells amazing. And the, the, the olive oil, the pesto, just gives it this, this, this fragrance that is just amazing. This is all about the texture. It's all about the flavor and, and, and let it cool. <laughs> mm. My friends, you could eat Two bowls of this. Mm. Amazing. Remember, the vegetables cannot be like mush. They gotta be, have a little bite to it, okay? Now remember, if you're gonna put the lettuce in there, you gotta cut it up smaller, otherwise you're gonna have some long pieces in your spoon and it's gonna be tough to eat. Friends, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again in the next couple of days with another fantastic video.